Hey everybody, Nick here, and tonight we're going to do a little disassembly and maintenance for you on this little guy right here. This is the Millet Knives and TJ Schwartz Torin. So, interesting knife. Um, absolutely 100%, absolutely gorgeous knife, uh, more than anything else. Um, let's go ahead and take this guy down, though. Um, really, although there were a bunch of screws on here, there, there were only three we actually need to take apart. And I have taken this guy apart before because, well, I wanted to carry it, and generally for me, carrying something involves an initial disassembly, get everything cleaned up. One thing to highlight though, right now, centering is very, very slightly favoring the show side. Uh, and then the uh, there is a little tiny, tiny bit of detent ball rock. See, the blade is able to pop in and out very, very slightly here. Um, it's not bad, but it is definitely there. Um, and Millet, when I talked to him about it, is that free spin? That's free spin, and that's right. Um, Millet, when I talked to him about that, said that it may be a factor of how the disassembly went, like that, that, that I, I, I made a mistake here. Um, and, you know, okay, sure. So I want to get a, you know, make sure that we, uh, whatever mistake I made, that I don't make it again. I think this side wants to turn, so I'm going to go ahead and let this side turn. I don't know what that means necessarily. There we go. Okay, so pivot is inserted from that side. I think if I recall, yeah, this is T8 too, which is great. And then this guy is also T8. So universal screw size on the knife, can't argue with that. Right there, I hereby absolve them of their sins for the free spinning pivot. If only I could make money offering absolutions for the knife community. Alrighty. Ah. <laughs> Moving along. Sorry, guys. Going down a weird mental path there. So, um, what we can see here is that on the inside, pretty straightforward knife. Um, a couple of things to highlight, though. There's that. Um... This guy is using a very interesting thing. This is a camming lock bar insert kind of thing. So basically, if you wanted to loosen these two screws and then turn this guy, you would move very slightly the position of this lock bar insert, and that would in turn affect the lock up of the knife. Um, I am not going to do that because this knife is locking up just fine, no problem. Um, but that's, that's something that's a little bit different and it's a little interesting, and it's not something I've seen... Actually, it's not true. I have seen similar as systems before. Although generally, people cam the stop pin. They'll have like the stop pin be uh, in such a way that you can do that. I think this is the first time I've seen a lock bar insert that'll do that. Is it a great idea? I don't know. Um, honestly, I tend to feel like any of those little subtle adjustments, although I'm sure they make sense from a manufacturing perspective, making it easier to mate the uh, blade and whatnot, those things tend to be a, a point of failure. It's something that if comes uh, if it comes unscrewed, uh, can potentially make the, uh, the, the, the knife less safe or... Uh, make it cease to lock up or something like that. So if you're ever, if you've got a torrent and you notice that, you know, suddenly you're getting weird things like 100% lock up or, uh, you know, a huge vertical blade play, uh, then that, that may well be what's going on for you there. You may need to tune that little insert a uh, little bit, which, eh, whatever. Pop that in there. You can see they've milled in a little race for the bearings, which is fine. It's using uh, steel bearings here. Uh, rather than ceramic, but looks like a ceramic detent ball. Do I believe that ceramic bearings matter in a case like this? No, not really. Uh, but, you know, interesting to see. Alrighty, there we go. There we go. Now I'm going to clean up the blade a little bit. This blade is beautiful damascus steel. Uh, this is Odin's eye, I believe, Thor's eye. Mythologically speaking, it would make sense if it were Odin. Um, and then one thing to highlight here is you can see that Millet has on this guy masked off the action. They have masked off, ah, masked off the uh, area where the bearings spin, as well as on this side, they've masked off the bearing area. This is great, because when you etch damas steel, uh, or any kind of Damascus pattern welded sort of thing, it will leave slight uh, you know, not imperfections, but it leaves uh, the, the little grooves and whatnot where the pattern shows up. And you don't want that showing up on the uh, on the actual action of the knife because that would feel like kind of scrapiness, scratchiness. Um, that was one of the big disappointments I had. Not big disappointment, but that was a disappointment I had with the Chris Reeve knives uh, small Sabenza. Uh, I'm sorry. And um, they probably did it for the small Sabenza too, but for the uh, the Menandi I had in Damascus Steel, 
um, they, they didn't mask off the, uh, the action area. And as a result, when you uh, close the knife, it felt like, you know, you, you, you're dragging it across the Damascus. And it wasn't so swinging. Kind of surprising for me, actually. Um, so we're actually pretty much all done here. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of, uh, give this a little love on the, uh, on the pivot here. Using a 10-weight nano oil here at a little pen applicator. And I'm going to give, uh, so I can just drop this onto here. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop the stop pin in on this side as well. I'm going to go ahead, apply a little bit of lubrication on this side. And I'm also going to add a little bit of lubrication to the detent ball path here. That way, it'll slide nicely. I'm going to go ahead and reinsert the bearing on this side because putting the bearing in is a great idea. FYI, anytime you're dealing with high-end knives, you want to reinstall the bearing. Then, finally, uh, we'll put the backspacer in place. Um, and actually, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put this screw here, and I'm going to put this screw here. That way, they're both in position. Then I'm going to slide the backspacer onto these screws. And then, with that in place, use my little Loctite stick here. Apply a little bit of blue thread locker to both sides. Ah, you little bastard. Come here. Come here. There we go. That's good. So that'll, that way I don't have to worry about the backspacer alignment and whatnot. I can just drop this whole affair on there. Then ideally just tighten down. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, excellent. Now, finally, we got to reinstall the pivot here. As you can tell, I've put everything back together the way it was, even with the pivot on the uh, other side there. I don't know if that matters in this case, but I'm just going to assume that it does. All right. Come here. I'm going to make sure I'm not cross-threading anything. Come on. Pop in there, go home. It's very strange. This just does not want to seat right. Okay, that's a little better. What I did is I used my finger underneath there, and I'd show you, but I'm working in three dimensions, and I'm not entirely comfortable with it here. The enemy's gate is down, so to speak. Um, that's an Ender's Game reference. But I, I, I popped the, the, the lock bar loose there just to try and give me a little bit, uh, you know, one fewer degree of freedom uh, so that it could, you know, drop, well, I guess one more degree of freedom so that it could drop into position. Good Lord, man. Okay, let's try this again. That's a really weird-looking screw, actually. <laughs> weird. No wonder it doesn't want to see right. All right, whatever. There we go. I think that's in, but because it's free spinning, it's hard to tell. Oh, free spinning screw. Let's go ahead and tighten the pivot with this guy closed up. There we go. All right, so that's tightened down. Not cranked too much. No play, that's good. That's a little cranked. Let's back it off a little. Let's see right there, the bane of this knife's existence, which is lubrication. If this little piece right here, which by the way, I've put a little bit of extra texturing onto manually, uh, if that little piece, if you slip off of that, you're going to have a bad time. Okay, no play in either direction, which is good. A little detent ball play. Yeah. He said to kind of make sure everything seats properly. I think part of that may be uh, the function of the, obli uh, the oblong detent ball hole that they're needing to use in order to do this adjustable lockup thing. Oh, it is definitely running smoother, though. That's nice. There we go. Oh, yeah, that is actually way nicer. In terms of smoothness, I, I mean, I've been carrying this guy and using it, and so, you know, I've been wearing it in. Anytime you carry and use a knife, you're going to wear things in a little bit, and so cleaning out whatever gunk had got in there during the break-in 
actually absolutely helped. So um, we have not fixed the detent rock thing. Um, that's that's seems like just a fact of life. Uh, when this knife came to me, it had a liberal dollop of grease right here, which I think, well, very effectively masked that detent rock. Not saying that's the reason they used it, um, but that's just, I think that's what happened. So when I removed that and switched to an oil, it may have reemerged. But uh, anyways, uh, nonetheless, it is now running smoother than never, which is great. Um, let's see, how does it work on this side? There we go, yeah. Um, it's running great now in terms of uh, false shuttertude and overall... And there's no play, right? Oh, there's a little bit of play. Let me crank that in a little bit more. Each time you do, uh, you know, especially before the Loctite has a chance to set... Uh, oh, it's free spinning, of course. Before the Loctite has a chance to set, sometimes flicking it itself can back things out a little bit. Let's tighten that just a smidge. There we go. Yeah, we're back to no play. Oh, yeah. Actually, ah, nah, it's still there. All right, fair enough. Either way, I um, hope you found this interesting, and uh, there you go. Hope I just said that. <laughs> Mostly, I hope that you guys have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. I'm I'm off my game tonight. Like, two out of my four disassemblies planned have failed due to red Loctite, so I just, I don't know what I'm doing. But luckily, that's not a problem here. <laughs> have a good one, everybody. Bye now.